still some things out here like pesticide exposure that is um, probably in the formula. The reason I'm talking about CCD is um, um, in Athens, I'm the, the director of a national program to um, reverse CCD. This is a $4.1 million grant that was awarded to the University of Georgia a year ago. We're into our first of four years right now. And this is a, a research consortium with the University of Georgia and 16 other institutions from coast to coast, literally coast to coast, from the University of Maine, the University of California, and Riverside, and several institutions in between. And what we've done is sort of carved up some research agenda. And you all work on this, you work on this, you work on this, and you work on this, with the organized goal of trying to find out what is causing CCD and make some positive steps toward reversing it. CCD, I should say, is colony collapse disorder. It's a catch-all phrase that kind of takes in dying bees, okay? Sort of, we lump it into this label because we don't have any other good name for it. Um, CCD, colony collapse, declining bees, is, is surely a, a cloud of factors. It's not a linear cause and effect, it's a cloud of interacting factors. It includes things that are on that cartoon, like pesticide exposure, but it also includes varroa mites, it also includes nosema disease, and it also includes viruses. And I don't want to bludgeon you with a PowerPoint presentation on this, because I can just tell you some of the stuff where we're at right now. There was a paper published this summer that really shed some interesting light on colony collapse. And they were able to show that um, one of the viruses that we're really worried about is called Israeli acute paralysis virus. It's, um, it was identified in Israel and it's since kind of spread all over the world. And we have it here in Georgia as well. But Israeli acute paralysis virus seems to impair the ability of an organism's cells to translate the DNA information that they contain and then generate proteins that are specific to those genes. All this is to say that you know, our cells, our body cells, contain a complete genetic copy of all of our genetic information, each one of them, and our DNA is, is uncoded by another molecule in our cells called RNA, and RNA translates the DNA and creates a protein. So you got a protein for brown eyes, you know, the, the, the RNA reads the genes for brown eyeness and makes the proteins for brown eyes. It kind of works that way, a very one-to-one -one sort of relationship. Well, um, what we have found, not, not me personally, but what our, our colleagues have found, is that beehives that are infested with Israeli acute paralysis virus, this RNA molecule is all it's chopped up. There's literally fragments of RNA floating in the nuclei of the genes of the bees. Now, this has not tied a thread to CCD, but it's certainly waved a big flag of warning. Because what we're talking about is a very, very fundamental body process. If the bees are not able to translate the DNA in their cell nuclei, then all sorts of things are going to be you know, handicapped. And it's something like this is consistent with what we see in the field. When you got bees that are just, they're just sorry. You know, they, don't, they don't build up in spring. They die at the drop of a hat. If you're not there feeding, medicating, feeding, medicating, <laughs> treating really good, <laughs> they die. It's like their whole physiological um, mechanisms are just handicapped. And so when you find a fundamental process like the ability to transcribe and read DNA, and that's pretty fundamental. That's real super fundamental. This is, the, this is consistent with the kind of broad, poorly defined morbidity that we see out in the field. This kind of information helps uh, narrow this field down a little bit. Okay, we've eliminated Zeus, we've eliminated aliens, and we've eliminated cell phones. Well, we think that we're kind of focusing in a little more on the importance of 
viruses at a very fundamental level of causing you know, these types of broad, the general bee declines that we see. One of the one of the puzzling things about CCD is it's not very symptomatic. You know, it's very general. You know, the bees just you know they don't grow, they don't flourish, the queens die, the brood is spotty. You know, it's all very vague, generalized symptoms. And this is consistent with what we're seeing with this DNA transcription problem that I'm talking about. Okay, so what? Well, there is another technology that is kind of coming down the interstate that I think is exciting because it has application far beyond just bee health, and it spills over into human health. And it's a new technology called RNA silencing. It's the same molecule that I talked about. RNA reads the DNA and enables the cell to construct the proteins specific to the particular genes back in the nucleus. Okay, that, that's very fundamental. It applies to your whole genome. The new technology of RNA silencing is able to silence the uncoding of genes that we don't like. You don't like that gene? Well, we can make a molecule that will silence the transcription of that gene so that it won't be expressed. The organism is carrying it, but it's not able to co-opt the cell's protein-making mechanism and make those proteins that you don't like. I'll give you an example. A virus. A virus is really nothing more than just a parasite of a cell. So if you, rather than a tapeworm or something, it parasitizes the body. Think about a virus of a parasite in your cell. It gets inside your cell, takes over your, your that cell's replicating apparatus, and makes more viral DNA, not the host DNA. It makes viral DNA. It's a parasite of the cell. There is technology already available to silence Israeli acute paralysis virus. There's been a team working in Georgia and in North Florida that is testing a product from Israel. I guess kind of appropriate <laughs> from Israel. But, and it's an RNA silencing technology, and they have been able to demonstrate a reversal of symptoms in bees with Israeli acute paralysis virus. This is big stuff, folks. There has never in history been any remedial agent in insects or viruses. There is remedial agents for you and me with viruses, and those are vaccines, where you inject an organism with a, um, a dead or a, a dead form of the pathogen or a mimic of the pathogen, and you fool your body into making antibodies against that pathogen. And in some cases, you've got lifelong immunity to it. And we're, probably most of us in this room are vaccinated against everything. And that was a revolution. Well, the trouble is, insects don't have the kind of immune system that you and I have. They don't have antibodies. They're more primitive, so to speak. They resist organ or pathogens very differently. They resist them by um, engulfing them. They've got cells inside their body that eat alien invaders. They've got um, scarring mechanisms like you and I do. We get injured, we scar up. They have that type of scarring inside their body that can occur. Uh, they've got enzymes that break down some pathogens. They've got fever. Honeybees, in particular, can generate uh, elevated temperature and kill some of their pathogens. But they don't have antibodies. So without antibodies, in principle, a vaccine will never work. They just don't have the machinery to benefit from vaccines. So we have to look at something fundamentally and totally different, and this RNA silencing is surely one of these promising technologies that's, that's um, quite big. The potential is quite large. Um, it does not need to be limited to viruses. It can conceivably be expanded into varroa mites, for instance. You could uh, somehow deliver an RNA silencing um, compound to Varroa, presumably through feeding the bees. The bees consume it. The Varroa feed on the bee, pick up the RNA silencing mechanism, and it could be delivered to the dose, dose that's lethal to the mite. Um, this is exciting because it's a whole new way of controlling pathogens that is fundamentally new. 
and it's it's flowing directly from research associated with CCD. So um, keep an eye on RNA silencing. It's something that we're very interested in trying to work on. Um, we have not, we, we do not know the boundaries of RNA silencing, how widely it can apply. But presumably it could apply to nosema. It could apply to viruses, we already know that. The same company in Israel is already working on a virus cocktail of RNA silencing to try to take in all of the known major honeybee viruses in one fell swoop. 